Blitz on Two. Brought to you by Crew Chevrolet, Steen Enterprises, and McDonald's. Hello, high school football fans. Crisp weather. The fair is in town, and it's the last Friday in October. The perfect weather for high school football. It's week 10. I'm Brendan Clark, along with Evan West, bringing you all the highlights from your favorite teams. Yeah, getting down to it as we are, just a few weeks away from the postseason, teams still playing for region titles and playoff seating. Uh, sure is. are. Here are some of the storylines we are following tonight. Ashley Ridge coming back after a week off, looking to stay undefeated. They take on rival Somerville. Got a skis a showdown between Pinewood Prep and Porter Goud. And the Cruz connection is Berkeley plays at Hanahan. The Creek is rising in Goose Creek as the Gators look to hold off that West Ashley offense. And our Blitz on 2 game of the week, Cane Bay at Wando. Yeah, it's Halloween weekend, which leaves us wondering whether Wando will be a trick or a treat for their fans. It's been that type of season east of the Cooper. We live streamed in, our t in its entirety on our website. Got Cane Bay and Wando as we play football. First quarter, R.J. Roderick behind center gets all, oh, keeps it up around the right side in the end zone. Seven up in Cobra's lead. Second quarter, we had the same score. Look at this kid's speed. This is Chris Copeland going down the left sidelines, just splitting the Wando players. Doesn't get all the way in, but does get his helmet ripped off here at the end. That tacks out a couple of yards. That run led to this, the easy touchdown for Cane Bay as they went into the locker room with a 14-0 lead. Late third quarter now, still 14-0 until Copeland gets it. Thought he was going to get tackled for sure, but hey, I was wrong. Copeland goes 59 yards for the touchdown. It was 21-0, eventually 28-0. Kane Bay, though, they had to struggle. They had to hold off Wando. Look at that final score. 35-20, a late Kane Bay touchdown is what wins it for the Cobras. Big matchup. Dorchester County Bragging Rights got undefeated Asher Ridge in Somerville. It's 21-7 Asher Ridge with the halftime lead. Green Wave trying to make something happen. Sawyer Bridges, though, picked right there by Asher Ridge's Jay Whitlock. And that, my friends, is a drive killer. Ouch. Good news, bad news. Fox is forced to punt. The ball bounced off Cameron Green. Asher Ridge wouldn't cover. Somerville would make it interesting, though. Watch this. Right off me. Got to catch that football. You didn't do it. You give it back to Asher Ridge. This touchdown, Somerville made it 31, uh, 20, but 13, that is. Ashley Ridge gets the 37-21 win. That sets up the Battle of the Unbeatens next Friday as undefeated Ashley Ridge against undefeated Fort Dorchester. Another good matchup in the creek as the Goose Creek Gators play and host to West Ashley. 15 minutes into the game, Dominique Jefferson to Dijon Profit for a very profitable catch. Goose up 7-0. Gators are chomping away. All right, here comes the Wildcats. Justin Berry, the West Ashley stud quarterback, taking it right here, but he gets popped by Tory Burrell. Rumble! When Davis, Davis recovers. Goose recovers the football right here. Sets up an easy run by Dominique Jefferson. It's 14-0 all of a sudden. Dom ran for 265, three touchdowns tonight. In the spirit of Halloween, though, here comes some trickery from the Wildcats. Evan Eulery to Jordan White, 14-7. However, the treats would go to Goose Creek. The final 34-26 Gators win their sixth straight region title. How about to the backyard? Strap for James Allen coming off tough losses. Good news is somebody got to win tonight, right? <laughs> the Knights stayed off their horses and ran it themselves. Omari Johnson faster than a thoroughbred. He hauls in this one. 40 yards for the game's first score, 7-0 Stratford. Knights would get the ball back, and who gets it? J.D. Davis, known to run, but this time he fakes the pitch, shows he can throw a little bit too. Daniel Thompson on the long game, sets up Stratford near the goal line. They get close a couple of times, but all the way down to fourth and two, and Davis would get stuffed. James Allen takes over. Guess what? James Allen won this game 26-20 as the Trojans scored a 55-yard touchdown with three seconds to play. That's James Allen's fifth win ever over Stratford. Big win in the backyard. Big win. And the skis of rings, we had quite the showdown at Cyclone Stadium. Just three losses yeah. between Pinewood Prep and Porter Gow. The skis of 3A title up for grabs. So let's head to Porter Gow for the highlights. The Panthers and Cyclones. We pick it up in the second. Pinewood driving. Sammy Casey with the handoff to D'Angelo Knight. Next play, this time Casey's gonna pass. Who's he gonna hit? Knight again, picks up the first down. It's his favorite target. They're taking it inside the red zone. So here, the handoff goes to Leslie Redden. He channels his inner clowny, punches it in for six. Let's take another look at this one. 
Look at this hit. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah. goodness the defender would be all right right here, but Doink. Woo! Helmet flies off and they get the touchdown. And buckle that chin strap. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right, Vinewood up 14-7 over the Cyclone. Cyclone's driving now. It's Oliver Michelle. We've called this kid's name a couple of times to Matt Namoff. Then going for it on fourth down. Here it is, finding Chappelle Maddox. But it's just short. Pinewood takes over, and Casey looks to go again right here to his right side. So let's see it. Settling in under center. <laughs> and it's Connects a long, drawn out Tatum play. Rolling. Can he haul it in? He can. What a catch into Cyclone territory after a Pinewood field goal. Cyclone's trying to score before, before the half. Michelle drops back, but it's picked off by Braven Yegan. Pinewood goes in the half, 17-7. They go on to win it by seven, 31-24. Their first win over Porter Gout since 2009. Over to Daniel Island for Ack Mag and Bishop England. Bishop's up, 28-7 at the half. Here's Ack Mag striking first in the second. Steven Schlosser, Nate's younger brother from up the middle, three yards out, cuts the lead to 15. Bishops battle back with Leo Albano to Jake Mock. He scores from five yards out to make it 35-13. BE doesn't allow much from there as the Bishops win this one. They are back 41-13 over Academic Magnet. Over to Johns Island. Cross making the road trip to St. John's. First play of the game. Caleb Watson gets flushed out of the pocket, ends up with a toilet throw. It's picked off by the big man. Check it out, Malcolm Garrett. Let's take another look. He's probably 300 pounds, pushing it at least, and he just hauls this ball in. Hey, hey, hey. Trojans take over. Jamar Matthews fakes out the Islanders' defense, runs it right in. Seven zip, cross on top. Next offensive possession for the Trojans. They go on another march, and it ends with Matthews going in the air to Anthony Whitefall for the score. It's 14 0. Later in the quarter, St. John's would get in the end zone. The double reverse. TJ Givens going with a lip. Right in there, 14-8 after the two-point conversion, but Cross ends up with a big one, 52-16 over St. John's. Good win for Cross, they are your region champs. Mm -hmm. If you know your high school football, you know that when Jeff Cruz came to Hanahan High School, he really turned that program into a winner. Cruz now at Berkeley looking to get that program back on top, and he better hurry. The fans a little bit restless. Tonight at Hanahan, got Stags, Hawks, Cruz back in his old stopping grounds. Hawks were up 7-0 in the second quarter, add to the lead, Cyro White, with a touchdown run from 11 yards out, 14 nothing Hanahan. Stags trying to answer, but the guy I just mentioned, Simon White, well, he plays defense too. Picks off Darius Douglas, D squared. That pass is picked, he returns it inside Stag territory. They go all the way 24 in, but he went some of the way. He went a good bit of the way. He went almost all the way. Receiver Sammy Denmark, bad news here, he's a stud. He was hurt, didn't return while we were there. Jimmy Watson stepping up in his place to catch for Victor Colbert. Makes it 21-0 Hawks and Hanahan wins this game. 35-18 is your final. Next stop, we go to James Island for Northwood and first bat this tied at six in the second quarter. Chris Collins junking it deep. It's the wrong guy, but he falls. Oh, he drops the interception. That's Vontae Rayner. He can't believe it and neither can Northwood. Later, Collins makes him pay. Hits the right guy this time, Dante Jackson. Has another gear. He finds it. The Chargers are in business. Next play, the handoff to the big man, Trevor McNeil. He's an 18-wheeler. A truck with no brakes. Can't say I don't want to be a roadblock either. He's in to give Northwood a lead. They go on to win big, 55-28 over First Baptist. From James Island to Johns Island, Cathedral and Charleston Collegiate. We pick things up at the second half with Charleston Collegiate leading 40-6. They take mercy by running the football, but Jermaine Snyder isn't taking a knee just yet. That's a nice game. A few plays later, Cole Searson to Al Young. Shakes three tackles right here. There's one, two, three, and then tiptoes like a ballerina into the end zone. Such grace right there. Charleston Collegiate with the win, 52-14. Yeah, got some great highlights from Week 10, setting up that undefeated matchup Ooh, next week. Ashley one. Ridge and Fort Dorchester certainly be a great game. Still to come in the Blitz on two, though. More games from around the Low Country tonight. Going to check in on Stahl, Baptist Hill, Garrett, and North Charleston. Stay with us. You're watching the Blitz on two.